Hi, I'm John DeArman. And I'm Edward. And we're with the Kokio Valley Sword Group. Today we're going to go over the application for the first of the Nito Seho, Chudon. We'll start by going through it once just to demonstrate it, uh, refresh your mind, and then we will break it down to its individual parts. Then we'll look at uh, what the Gorin no Sho has to say about it and how the application really kind of differs a lot from the kata that we practice. Again, for our demonstration, I will be Shidachi, Edward will be Uchidachi, the bad guy. Uh, it, it, it's like it's like being simple. It's it's like pretty simple, but it's not. <laughs> it's like it is, but it's not. Right. So let's go ahead and uh, talk about the changes that are made uh, in the kata as compared to the fight. So in this first situation. Uh, we're here, we're here. Uchidachi's goal is to knock my swords down, bump and thrust or cut and get my, pull my attention back towards my body so that I'm trying to do stuff as he's moving around. Because uh, in his position, if he's smart, he recognizes the, the danger here, which is that for every action he takes, I can take two, right? It, it's, it's a very large benefit. What the weakness that comes with that benefit is, is strength in terms of wrestling and speed in terms of coordination. In other words, if I'm here and I go to bind with Eddie, he is going to beat me, right? He has got all of his support structure into this form. And as long as I am doing sort of 50-50, right, or trying to like kind of work them both together at the same time like I should be, you should, yeah, let's uh, make that clear. You should not sword fight with two swords like so. If he swings, and a one, and a two, and a one. That is, no, no, don't do that. That's, <laughs> he's, he's, he's going to whoop you. They have to move in concert together. And so if I try and oppose him with that kind of grappling strength, he's, he's going to whoop me. And of course, because he has one focused line, if I'm coming to attack him, he can slip it easily. And again, if I try and wrestle him with this position, he's going to win, right? So. It begs the question, what, what's going on at this last exchange, right? He takes this big, and what do I do? I wrestle him. Edge of my sword to the edge of his sword. If you ever get sent in your time machine, travel back to ancient Japan, and you fight a samurai, and that samurai goes, you better eat them, right? You, you better take them nine ways to Sunday. This is not a good attack. This is an exaggeration to educate students, right? And what is it educating them on? The structure of the arm through and into the leg. Not that I will uh, win in terms of strength here if he starts to actually wrestle me, but just in terms of sheer impact. This is just testing to see if you have your joints lined up. It's the same as when we do saw sin and your partner puts their hand over your sword tip and you push, right? To study your structure, this is the same thing. 
if somebody swings their sword at you, do not do this. <laughs> the moment they go to wrestle you, they're, they're going to take you and you're going to be pooched. If your sword survives, if their sword survives, I could hit this, break his sword, pop right through it, and I've got now a foot, a shrapnel that has right momentum right towards my brainy bits. It's, it is, do not, do not, do not, do not do that. Right? So, what does this mean though? Like, is this whole, why are we doing this undercut at the same time? Is it just to like build skill? You do the same work, but against somebody that's cutting for real. So, if this is cutting for fake, what's cutting for real, right? Obviously, it's that holding the center. It's that, that I come in, whoop, and I drive into that space. Boom. Whether I'm displacing off to the side, like in the Hasokatas, or whether I'm driving in, like in Aisin Uchidome, right? It is that holding of the center. So if Eddie comes in and cuts me in that kind of fashion, whoop, right? Now, my hand position is much better. My hand position is actually checking him. And because our structure is similar, how we rotate and relate to each other is similar. So before, where he could just come to the side and control, well, because I can rotate here in either direction, right? Because I can move into any other of the defenses that we're showing, you can take this, right? Now, he makes the cut. But the other difference is how my edge is relating to his sword. My edge is no longer counter to his edge, which well, is to say uh, we're, we're, we are not hurts. directly opposed. I am coming beside his sword. I'm actually on the side of the G, the, the, the flat plane of the sword that the edge is connected to, right? This lets me work like a plow, not directly opposing his force um, like this in a situation where he's going to win and take me, but camming his force off. The That's more science. I push, the more he pushes, the more he drives away from that center line, but, and the more uh, space is created for me to work him. Uh, now there are dangers, of course, here. If I get real wide with my arm, in other words, if I, if I make my arm and I try and do the same relative angle and position to my body as in the kata, I'm giving him a lot of space. He's gonna come under, he's gonna take the arm, uh, probably the throat too, uh, he's, he's gonna eat me, right? So I don't wanna come here. Right? I want to do what the Goro no Show says, right? Three parries. And the third parry with your short sword. When your opponent attacks, punch them in the face, Pretty right? Much. You just bring your hand, boom, like you're going to hit them in the head. Boom. Right? Bop. Bop. I like that hand. You take him at the same time. He doesn't have reasonable defense. He doesn't have a, a, a form that allows him to readily have a solution to this. Doesn't mean that it's unstoppable, as any piece of work can be broken apart. What it means is he has to go outside of what he already knows, the skill set he already possesses, to take it. Now, some people say, oh, but John, you know, what about, uh, what about Amashi Uchi, right? Here, you're just coming in and attacking their spare hand. Well, we have a solution for that, right? Wah! Maybe they have a solution if they're coming up from underneath. Wah! Right? The difference is where my sword ends, right? With this cut, as it comes up from underneath, right? Let's say they go, whoop, Ada, come back. Where are you going? Whoop, right? Because it's just the one, right? If I go to evade, 
he already has the line on the thrust, right? He already has me in this position. Removing my hand just delays it, right? And it's not enough of a delay to, uh, to free my sword from their position because my focus is over here. And since, just like a suppression, all I can really do is go backwards. And he's, boop, right there. I'm not getting away. He is, un unless my footwork and my timing of my relation to him are really, really, really bad, or he is incredibly athletic, he's pooched here, right? It's a very bad time. It's, it's a very, very bad time. So, uh, I think it's I think it's time to to look at what Musashi has to say about these kata because these are the kata that he wrote about in the Go Rindo show in his five approaches. Um, so for this, we'll be using uh, Kenji Tokitsu's The Complete Book of Five Rings. I will uh, try and remember to put a link down in the description. This is the best currently available Go Rindo show translation and commentary. It is inexpensive. It, 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 if, if you were balking at uh, Hidey Orochi's uh, book at, at 50 plus bucks, this is much more approachable. Yeah, that's pretty good. So, uh, this is uh, probably Book of the Water. I think it's Water Book. Uh, the first technical form. Take the middle guard. Position the point of your two swords at your opponent's face confront your opponent in this manner, right? So, we already know what's going on there. Bump, bump. This is how I'm, uh, I, I'm addressing the dude. So, when he launches an attack, deflect his sword to the right and pressing on it, make your attack with the point of the sword. What's that? Where, what, what's going on there? Where's the... De deflection, point of the sword. That sounds like some crazy, some crazy ninja nonsense. Hey, okay. uh, swing all the way. <laughs> Don't stop. Swing all the way. Hey, okay. boom. And you press with the sword. That's a different cut of though. No, this is this is the same one. This is this motion, right? This kitty. Uh, oh, okay. Kisaki Gaishi, right? He's cutting. I'm moving thrust, right? What is it? It's Sasen. That's it. It's Sasen that stifles his ability With an extra pokey. to respond to it. It's, uh, it is fast. It is easy. Um, and you'll encounter it a uh, surprising amount. Right? I was like, oh, okay. See what's, see what's going on here? Some sneakiness, some sneakiness approaching. If your opponent attacks you again, strike him from above, downward, turning the uh, point of your sword one quarter of a circle and leave your sword in the position that is reached. If your opponent, or actually, let's go ahead and go from there, right? So, we're in this situation. He swung, I've thrust it. He has to retreat. And what's he gonna do? He's gonna try and parry. As he's parrying, I'm cutting and pop! I come at him the whole time, rolling him onto his back feet. So again, he comes up to clear, ba da, ba ba, right? I'm attacking several times in the half beat of his motion. It's very, uh, there's a lot of semi here, a lot of pressure, a lot of pressure, pushing him around. Kata assumes that as he retreats, I miss, right? Bah. But we'll see. We'll see what it says, right? If your opponent attacks once again, cut his arm, starting with your sword in the low position. All of this constitutes 
the first form. And it goes on to talk a little bit about the Nito Sejo and the role that they play. So, when you look at this kata in its whole, right, uh, from Chudon, right, you pull Pinazo, right, we're walking, the guy swings, bomb, and from this moment you are winning. He has to retreat, ba, 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 boop, right? Ba, ba, on and on and on and on. Because you command all of this space, you force him to kind of peck at you like somebody attacking the outside of a ball. By being willing to uh, really work in a lot closer. You can, you can really dominate your opponent um, in terms of space and their ability to move around. Um, tricky part about that is, most of the time, people want to work far away, far away. And the kata are spaced far, far away. Because for safety, right? You can't be swinging full speed when somebody might get their, their noggin Whack, and so the cut comes, and it's like, way the shit out there, right? Wah, I almost cut you. Wah, wah. And now all of a sudden, this doesn't seem so bizarre. It doesn't seem so awkward, because we're out here, where there's all of the space in the world to make this kind of motion. But the reality of the kata is that he's cutting at you and you are taking him, right? You are gonna just control and pin and just beat him mercilessly. Um, for real. <laughs> and Kata, of course, be kind to your partner. Please. You don't win easily by pussyfooting around. In other words, Right? If you're giving up space and you're, you're giving up time, you're going to have a hard time, especially if the other person is even close to your skill level. Right? But when you can dominate a person and their position and really just put them in places where they are forced to move, where they cannot fight the way they want to fight, right? Uh, which is important, right? If, if he's up here, he pulls into Hasso, he's like, I want to attack. I am not going to be like, here, let me let you keep attacking. You can just keep attacking, right? I don't want him to fight the way he wants to fight. I want him to fight in the way that he is most uncomfortable, right? If he can't swing his sword around freely, then That's good for me, right? Pretty simple, pretty easy. Um, of course, what are the ideas here, right? First idea is in the Kamai itself. It's this control of space. It's owning all of this, right? Like when you're walking, them having basically no way to easily move and accept, uh, access uh, an opening, something that's really going to provide benefit to them. Uh, it, it, it cuts off their line so that what they have to try and do is break apart your position first. It's like uh, they're trying to lay siege to your castle, right? They can't just walk in the front door. So, you know that if the person's smart, they're working to break apart your structure. If they're not, they're trying to come off to a side to uh, attack you regardless of your structure. But that won't work, right? Because you have a really uh, strong defense here. Not a defense because you've set it up 
to block all incoming attacks. But just by the virtue of your position as it relates to your opponent, it's a, uh, it's incredible. It is really incredible that something so simple uh, can have such a profound effect on the fight, right? So what's the next idea? Next idea is if they're doing something stupid, don't stop them, right? He wants to spend his time attacking your sword, right? That's fine. Why do I care? I don't give a care, right? Because if he hits my sword, let's say that he is, uh, go ahead and, and give you some self some distance and try and hit it far out, bah, right? So he's at a place like his far distance where he can really uh, hit me. Go ahead, right? I am gonna be right away, at the very least, into his thumbs, into Kote, his wrists, the thumbs. right? It is so rough for him. He gains almost nothing from doing this. It's a big gamble. And if it, even if he succeeds, he still has to take another action, which means he has to take two turns in the time it takes me to make one to resolve it. So I can literally just kind of chill here, just be like, oh God, you did awful things and broke my posture and have it not matter. Have it not matter. I can be passive and win here. Of course, Musashi doesn't advocate passivity, right? He's just like, right? Deflect that sword. Deflect that sword. Please no. Deflect that sword. Drive in and take him, right? Because that's your, your easy opportunity. When he's going, I'm gonna do this. It's like, okay, sure. Right? And you just eat him, right? So, letting them do Dumb things, <laughs> right? <sighs> right? It's very powerful. So what do we get next? Right? The next thing that we're studying is to keep momentum. In other words, he's cut, pull it up, I thrust, woo, 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 right? And I just roll him like a ball. As long as I can get that big freaking heavy, Heavy ball moving a little bit. I can roll it, roll it, roll it. Can't step on stuff. We're in now. Right? And it's uh, it's real easy then. Next, don't uh, you don't have to leave the center. You don't have to leave this control. When they attack, right? Wow! Right? Sometimes people want to focus on the attack itself. They they orient their body to it, they orient their tools to it. They're like, this is the problem, handle that. It's a big mistake, right? The, the, the sword is not the problem. If the sword's on the ground, it's not gonna jump up and bite you. This is a magic sword, right? <laughs> person is the problem. And not even the whole person, just a teensy little bit. That itty bitty little grain in their brain that says, I will kill this dude. That's the problem. That's all you have to be. Mushy bacon fat. Right, it's all you have to be. Right? When you roll them, you force them to have to respond to you. You make them as if writable by thrusting at the face. Read your books. Right? So, um, let's go ahead and leave that off for right now. And let's look at some Fukuro Shinai work so you can see this done uh, closer to speed. So, uh, with the Fukuro Shinai work, uh, the Fukuro Shinai for the Shoto is constructed in the same way as for the long sword. I'm pretty sure I have a video way, way, way back, like a year ago. Yep. Um, easy to make. Uh, the Shoto ones last a lot freaking longer. Uh, they hurt more. They do hurt more because they're sturdy. Right? <laughs> okay. So, let's go ahead and look at these ideas a bit, right? Where you want to start at? Right here is fine. Okay. Wherever you want, right? Right? And it's just like that, right? The interactions are direct. So soon. Yep. Right? You can, you can control in 
so many ways just from studying this first kana. What was that? <gasps> that was the Kisaki Gaishi to thrust, but the Kisaki Gaishi turned in to the cut from the Gator on Kata, right? What's important is to develop good structure. Woo, I'm dead. <laughs> Got a little too fancy there. I did, I did, right? Is to develop good structure. And to get the feeling of your swords, right? Just fling them around. Yeah, you just fling them around, right? Because if you do something wrong, it will be like, get hey, you'll hurt yourself if you go too fast, or you'll just feel bad. Right, right. Feel how they move as objects in the air. Right. See how easy it is to control a person when you own this space, it is uh, terrifying. It is very hard to fight. Very hard to fight. Can be done, right? Can be done. We can. Um... Oh Christ! Oh yeah. So, if I'm here, if I try and ignore him and go to something that I can hit, he's going to eat me. So I can't do that, All right? If I try and attack his structure in an unsophisticated way, he's gonna be able to respond to it and he's gonna take me. So, how do I solve it? What's the problem? I have to think mm, a little backwards, right? I have to decide how to move his structure around without uh, attacking it coarsely. For this, the kata gives us the answer. Hustle, okay, right? So we're here, we're circling, we're fighting. The idea is that, you know, maybe I'm the bad guy, right? I'm pressing this, right? And you peel it open like a clam, right? The one you choose to work against will depend, will decide how you're going to act in response. If I'm attacking the Shoto side, I clear that and I want to come in and I want to snug this up a bit, right? I want to come in here like I'm wrestling. I might abandon the sword altogether and go straight into grappling and throw him to the ground. If you stay too far out, you're just getting right. on you. If I'm working the long sword side, I have to be more cautious and I have to fight further out because this is very fast and it poses a big danger to me, right? So those are, again, ideas within the kata that you can look at and go, oh, this is how we work. This is the best work against our work. What does that mean for us, right? For one, we get a lot of exposure to it right away, right? Because he's in there kata style, I swing, he clears, right? And he gets used to this feeling of the person trying to break through and how he can respond to it by following me in time, by hitting in that uh, after blow at uh, Tynosen. Pretty sure Tynosen. Yeah. We're going to call it. Though. It is Tynosen, I'm pretty sure. So that's your kind of option. That's your kind of work. This is how this looks, right? It's this sort of. He's in a drive. If I just swing at him, bah, right? He's right into me, uh, hopefully choosing better targets with better parts of his sword. Poof, <laughs> yeah, that's a little better. So, uh, you explore it, right? This takes time, right? Most of us, we pick up a sword and we're like, we're awkward, like, you know, Baby horses or something, I don't know, some floppy giraffe looking thing. And it's rough, but we eventually get there because we're used to, I manipulate one object in space. This is easy. Once we start doing two, we're, we're getting a lot of rain activity and- Great brain time. And it's not, it's not as simple 
It's just being coordinated enough to do what you want with the arms that you want, right? Because just your arms alone are not enough. You have to have that support of your posture, of your core, both to generate the power for your cutting motions and to provide the support for any of your motions, whether it's defensive or offensive. And that takes time. It takes practice. Um, it takes doing the kata a lot. <laughs> Do the kata a lot. And, uh, you know, test yourself in the position. So if Eddie and I go through the kata, I'm the bad guy. Oh, Jesus. Yep. Go to shoot on. I pop up to Hasso. You chill your stuff. I walk one, two, three. Right? And so it's a good, good time, right? To see, right? Can I make this, right? Use the lightweight Boken or use Fukuro <laughs> when you're starting out. Does it hurt? Because it's fast and it's hard and it's hard on your elbows, right? And you start to study, you know, bah, can I get here? Bah, can I get here? Bah. And this will always seem like it lags behind. What kind of speed do I really need? Um, not because our goal is to go as fast as possible. Our goal is to understand the relationship, the interaction here, right? So then we go forward, right? Right, so boop, out in the judon, I passed, whoop, right? And then it's the same thing, right? Right, and he just studies, he goes, can I bring my tools whoop, back around? Then he sees if he can follow right underneath with that Kisaki Gai Shikai. Ah. Right? And the trick, at first, you will feel so behind, so slow, just like, like it, it will, yeah, it will feel impossible, especially if your Shidachi is uh, working you. And they should. Shidachis, or Uchidachi, I mean, Uchidachi, bad guy. Work your Kohai, right? Work your junior, right? Let him know, right? This is happening. Boom. And they start to develop a sense for where they need to be intuitively to protect themselves and take the opponent apart, irregardless of what they do, right? So, uh, and it's the same thing with the last bit, right? He's in that aggressive gate on, right? And I'm in that hasso, and I take that swing, right? Puya, I don't remember the kata. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, remembering the kata oh, God. is important. Oh, good. Right? Right? And you start to feel like, oh, right? That ain't good. This is not gonna hold, right? So you start to think of that punch and just sucker him in the face. And now all of a sudden you see how his weight shifts back. Wah! Because it's loading into his shape. So all he has to do, bump. Squip. Whoop. Squip, squip. Have fun. <laughs> and I'm not getting through, right? More importantly, any force I apply here, whoop, is going to lead to worse for me, whoop, when he displaces it. Because he is in the power position to do that, right? And even if I come, whoop, and I start doing funky stuff, he just has to stare at me, right? He just goes, whoop, and watches and follows with his body, whoop and takes me at his leisure. So, let's go ahead and uh, look at some other, uh, some other applications, right? You can do, oh, Eddie's favorite, the jute. Go ahead, grab, uh, use the shinai as the marker. Marker I'll be Uchidachi. So, uh, Musashi's father, Munasai, uh, as anyone who's made it this far in the series should know, was considered a master of the jute. The jute is like this uh, sai that we've made into a jute. cut one of the ears off of. Well, it's, it's convenient because it's got the, the ear big enough for Boken. So it's really, it's pretty nice. And you can apply the jute work 
Like, you can think of our short sword work as jute work. Surprisingly. Uh, yeah, yeah. They, they are almost, almost completely interchangeable. And once you realize that, it makes a lot more sense why Musashi shapes his Shoto work in the way that he does. Um, not because it's particularly atypical, um, just because at first it seems uh, discordant with his longsword principles. Um, but then you realize, no, you just didn't have the context to understand it, right? So, Eddie's going to demonstrate this kata with the jute, right? He'll start off in right? What we're going to do is just the last exchange. Uh, so you can be in Chudon or you can be in the gate on position if you want. So we come up, 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 a little bit forward. So we good camera frame, good right? Camera frame. As I make that swing, boop, he catches it. And now it's in that ear and I'm pooched, right? If he wants, he can lock it down and start driving it in to, oh, that hurts so bad, to control the wrist, to control the upper body form instead. Um, this is where having strong grappling skills is useful and understanding like where you can move their body easily, how you can use the point of the jute to really persuade them. To not do this. To not do this, to work as you like. Um, is really, uh, it's very powerful. It's 50, it was cool when we figured this out. It's, it's, it's very, uh, it's very good. Right. So, um, one more time, just for giggles. I make the swing, pop, right? And he takes me. Uh. Jutes are cool. Jutes are cool. They are cool. So, let's look at some knife work. Right? So, what are our ideas here? holding space, right? Now with the sword, arms are out because we have just as much distance protecting us. We want to kind of work that backwards and do the same thing here. If I hold my, my knife out far like this, I have much more of my arm exposed than is protected by my tool, which means if he's out here, right? If he's out kind of far and we're working and he lets me get a little close, right? I can start to uh, pick apart his tools, especially if I start employing some uh, deception in, in my work, right? Something to catch his eye, to create movement. Um, I right? Yeah, God damn it. <laughs> <Aren't you? laughs> <laughs> That's how the Go Red No Show talks about Kihai, by the way. Um, so, what are, what are our others, right? Or rather, how do we adapt that two-sword position? Just bring your elbows in, right? Boxing. <laughs> Chudon! Maybe Chudon. Chudon! Also, right? You get the idea. Yeah. Working close, work in conjunction, or, or work with respect to the power of the tool that you're using, right? Knives have, uh, a lot of power, but it's small power, right? Swords have a lot of power, but it's big power. And so you have to shape your body for that. That seems a little woo-woo, but you, you guys can, I, I think you can make the mental leap and catch it there. So what's the next part? The next part is that control, right? So if he's coming to, to swing at me, to cut at me, he wants this, he wants this control. Kisaki. Kaisi. Right? Even with that same diagonal cut. Right? Yo! This <laughs> is kind of ingrained. This control, right? Using the circle so that it's harder for him to adapt and come out of it is uh, is pretty strong, and it can go wax on and wax off. Oh yeah, either way. Ooh, so fancy. Hey, circles. Hey, it's like Masashi's like the aliens guy. Circles. In me. <laughs> Judon. Circle the tips. Circle the tips some more. Right? It's a good thing. It's a good thing. Right? So what's next? Rolling the opponent. Keeping them. <sighs> yeah. I'm out of frame. 
keeping them in motion. I'm breaking the fourth wall here. Yeah, it's okay. It, it's okay. It's a, it's a bamboo wall. It's very flimsy. Right now, a waddle and daub. Keeping them responding to you. So, my first interaction, bump. I don't remember what I did. I did, I did something. I did something. This and this, they were friends. They were friends, and this thing was not a friend with me, so it's okay, right? Works out of range and into his defense. Works out of range and into his defense. But he's backing up. He's backing up. He's backing up. He's backing up, right? And you just keep pushing it, right? Maybe the first few don't work. Just keep you adjust. Up. You just adjust. It's, it's so much easier <laughs> and so much less pretty than people want it to be. Oh, it's, it's horrific. It's, it's, it's not super complicated. It's uh, pretty simple, pretty it isn't, easy. Yeah, it's is pretty simple, pretty easy. So um, hopefully you guys can see that, of course, with open hand, this is going to be the same, right? Same kind of thing. If he's working me, I'm doing the same kind of deflection to hold the center. I'm doing the same kind of body motion, ba, 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 to, to push it and control if my goal is striking. Maybe my goal is not striking, right? This is, oh no. right? It is, if you do the kata, you realize that it's, it's so grapply, right? Oh, grapple, you know, oh, grapple position, right? It's, this is what we got to fist swords. It is, it is. It's wrestling with razor blades. It's, uh, doesn't that sound fun, kids? Sounds fun. The work is, uh, it's not hard. It is not hard and it is not hard to understand. Take some time to prepare your body, right? It can take some time to prepare your heart, especially if you have not done the tachi seho a lot, right? Tachi seho is partially there to, uh, you know, <laughs> grow your, your ability to drive a dude and really work him, right? So you're not just like, oh, I love Musashi's work. It's so, <laughs> oh God, right? And you just get bowled over by somebody who's actually doing it. It's not to say taking your time and doing the kata precisely as prescribed, exact steps, exact angles, is bad or a waste or, or any of that, right? The error comes in the assumption that that beautifully curated kata and that those lovely hakama on that, that you know, gym floor like we're at, <laughs> you know, for that, or that, that shrine for Imbu or whatever, that that, that little island is what Hyoho is. And it's not, it's not. Hyoho is a, is a strategy, it's a series of methods where you prevail, that's it, right? Which means sometimes Hyoho doesn't look anything like the kata, right? Some, sometimes it looks like you're doing nothing, right? Very Wu Wei. Other times, you're real active, but not in a, not in a classically Japanese honey kind of way, right? You can work and win, and it can still look different. So, I think that we have covered uh, just about all of the Chudani bits. Um, obviously, there's always more, and you could talk about it for hours, but you guys are probably getting tired. So let's go ahead and cut it off there. And as always, if you want to understand this work, you have to pick up your sword and go train.